Today, we'll talk about the people who discovered the theory of evolution. This lesson was made by Jackie Hyenall and Mariah Thrush as part of Ohio University's NSF-funded Boat of Knowledge in the Science Classroom. You've probably seen this picture, but do you know who this is? Charles Darwin is referred to as the father of evolution because he came up with concepts of evolution after his experiences abroad and reading the work of people before him. Let's start with Darwin's experiences. His profession was as a naturalist and a geologist. After graduating college, Darwin boarded the British ship, the Beagle, and helped to survey South America, including the Galapagos Islands. This trip lasted five years, and Darwin learned much from his experiences. On the Galapagos Islands, Darwin observed anything he could find in the environment, but he particularly focused on fossils, finches, and turtles. In these fossils, he saw skeletons of species that were found nowhere on Earth. In other words, these fossilized species were extinct. Darwin looked at living animals too. He observed a, spe a specific type of bird called a finch. There were many species of finches on the Galapagos Islands, and Darwin began to recognize that finches had different shaped bills depending on what they ate. For example, in the picture here, finches with large, thick beaks ate seeds, while finches with thin, narrow beaks ate insects picked out of wood. The turtles Darwin observed across the Galapagos Islands had a similar story to the finches. These turtle species are all closely related, but have different appearances and shell shapes due to environments they live in. With the experiences from his trip to South America, especially in the Galapagos Islands, Darwin thought about what he had seen and began to create the concept of evolution. He published many books and pamphlets, but the most popular was titled On the Origin of Species. For Darwin, creating and then publishing the concept of evolution was a slow process. 28 years passed between when he boarded the Beagle to when he published his famous book. Darwin knew his idea was groundbreaking and that society might not accept it. At the time, most of society thought that species were unchanging parts of a designed hierarchy and that humans were unique and unrelated to other animals. During that 28 year period, Darwin not only thought about what he saw, but he also read scientific literature. In other words, Darwin did not just come up with these ideas of evolution out of thin air. He read others' work and thought deeply about those concepts, then associated them with his own experiences. While Darwin read papers from many scientists, work from these four men stand out as inspiration and precursors to Darwin's work. Their work also helped pave the way for society to be slightly more receptive to his idea of evolution. Jean-Baptiste Lamarck lived from 1744 to 1829. Lamarck's work published in 1815 asserted that acquired traits are inherited. Lamarck used giraffes for an example of acquired heritable traits. In his example, giraffes with short necks would stretch to reach leaves higher in the tree. Each generation would stretch higher and higher, and that stretching would be inherited by each generation, leading to progressively longer necks. If this sounds logical to you, sorry. You're incorrect. Think of it this way. Your parents learned or acquired math skills when they went to school. So why didn't you inherit what they learned? Another way to think about it is a person who loses their arm in an accident and then has children will not have one armed children. Darwin didn't just read papers in biology. He read other subjects, including geology. James Hutton is considered the father of modern geology. As Darwin had evolution as his big idea, James Hutton had a big idea called uniformitarianism. Uniformitarianism explains that the features of Earth's crust, such as mountains, were made by natural processes over geologic time. Hutton's work wasn't widely published until Charles Lyell put together and published The Principles of Geology. Darwin read Lyell's book, and that is where he found Hutton's ideas. Darwin took these geologic ideas and started to apply them to organisms. Thomas Malthus wrote an essay on the principle of population in 1798. In his essay, he observed that plants and animals 
produce more offspring than can survive, and that environmental forces help to limit the number of offspring that survive. The limit in the number of offspring that survive translates to a limit of population growth. Malthus wrote that population growth is limited by overcrowding and a lack of food, which in turn lead to war, famine, and disease. The theory of evolution didn't appear overnight, and Darwin had a great deal of help in creating this concept.